and welcome to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We are glad you're with us. We've been doing this show a long time. I hope you're a regular viewer and you know that we talk to uh, interesting people and uh, discuss some uh, topical issues. And boy, this guy is center stage that we well, got today. Well, he is. By the way, happy 2007 to Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've been doing this show since 2001, believe it or not. It's hard to imagine. <laughs> that is. This guy, though, that you mentioned, the Honorable Lance Cargill, is center stage. He's the uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives in Oklahoma, recently so designated, and going to have a major role in what happens in state government for uh, this coming session and probably many years thereafter. Speaker of the House, Lance Cargill. Today's guest on The Verdict. We'll be right back. At Chesapeake Energy, here's a few of our favorite hornets. Alexis likes reading. Sam enjoys history. Alec loves math. Chesapeake is proud to support both the Oklahoma City NBA Hornets and the Young Hornets at Horace Mann Elementary, where over 150 Chesapeake employees mentor to children each week. The students gain a lot from the experience, but not as much as we do. Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. Check this out. What? What are we listening to? I had digital phone service installed today. It sounds just like before. I know, but it's going to save us a ton of money. With Cox Digital Telephone, you'll save big every month. Keep your same phone number and get your favorite calling features. Just pay less. That does sound good. You should hear the upstairs phone. There's a whole new world online, but it's not always safe for kids. Never agree to meet anyone you only know online, because they might not be who they say they are. And if you must meet them, take a parent along. It's the safe way for kids. Right, gang? Right. Be safe online. Thanks to Lauren Nelson and Cox, we're working to keep Oklahoma kids safer online. For your free guide, log on now. And if you feel your child has been placed in danger by someone online, notify law enforcement today. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce today's guest. Today we're honored to have the Honorable Lance Cargill, the Speaker of the House of Representatives of the State of Oklahoma, join us once again. He's been on several times before. And uh, Lance is a native of Hera, New Orleans area. Uh, went to Hera High School as a graduate of uh, undergraduate work at Oklahoma State University and the law work at Vanderbilt University. Has been in private practice uh, in Hera and outside of Hera in uh, Dallas and mm -hmm. around. Uh, but is now the uh, newly elected Speaker of the House and has an awful lot to do. He was first elected to the House in uh, 2000 and in a relatively short period of time established conf confidence of his uh, constituents and his uh, contemporaries and they elected him uh, to start his term uh, pretty quickly. Yes. Uh, this yes. term. Well, welcome. Thank you. Well, how has life changed since you've become Speaker of the House? A little bit more busy. Um, <laughs> uh, still uh, live in Hera and still have two wonderful little boys and a wonderful wife and uh, still have a, a law practice and that sort of thing. But uh, obviously uh, a higher level of responsibility now at the Capitol uh, and looking forward to the challenges and opportunities it presents us. Let's talk for a minute about your leadership team mm -hmm. in the House. I know you're at the top, but let's talk about the team members that are going to uh, work with you. Uh, first of all, tell us who they are and how you went about selecting them and just kind of generally what the duties of each will be. Sure. Well, on the Republican side, Republicans, of course, are the majority in the State House. Uh, we have both elected and appointed components to our leadership team. Uh, the uh, number two position in the House is the Speaker Pro Tem, and that's elected by the caucus. And the gentleman who uh, won that position is named Gus Blackwell, uh, former educator, 
from uh, the Panhandle. He represents uh, the uh, uh, Panhandle District. He's from the Guyman area. Uh, we have uh, the chairman of the Republican Caucus is a gentleman named John Wright, who is from suburban Tulsa. We have a majority floor leader who will help uh, guide the activities of the floor uh, as legislation progresses through the process, and that's Greg Pyatt. He's an uh, eighth year member from southern Oklahoma, Ardmore. And then we have a majority whip uh, who is uh, from Kingfisher, Rob Johnson. So uh, we have a budget chairman, Chris Binge from Tulsa budget vice chairman uh, uh, Ken Miller from Edmond. So I think we have a real good geographic mix uh, in terms of the Republican leadership. Uh, there's good generational mix, frankly, uh, but it's a very good team. You've obviously shown some outstanding leadership uh, very quickly as a member of the House of Representatives. Who are your role models? Who, is, has, who have you learned from to get to where you are today relatively quickly? Well, I, I tell you, uh, my mom and dad are, are my most important role models. Um, they're people who were not necessarily involved in politics. Uh, my dad was a forklift driver at the old Safeway and then Homeland Grocery Store ware Warehouse on 36th Street. My mother's been very involved in our church. Um, she's the piano player, but um, they're two people who taught two little boys to work hard and dream big dreams. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they're selfless people who uh, invested in the life of their family. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the best role model, I think, for, for anyone, whether you're in politics, business, uh, or life, uh, is just work hard, dream big, and uh, good things can happen. Okay, but once you get in the Capitol, sure. who taught you to, to rally support, to become speaker? I mean, where do you, sure. where do you learn the ropes? Uh, sure. uh, and the way that uh, one has to to become sure. Speaker of the House. Well, certainly the, the predecessors in my positions all demonstrated great political uh, acumen, I guess you could say. Uh, Larry Ferguson, going back to when I first came, uh, was a, um, an older member from Cleveland who had been in the, in the House for uh, some you know, 15, 20 years uh, and certainly knew the ropes. Fred Morgan from here in Oklahoma City was a very capable and able leader who, who brought us uh, very forward in terms of uh, Republican strength in the legislature. Then Todd Hyatt, who was a very good leader, um, and the first uh, Republican House Speaker in 80 years, a really historic figure in Oklahoma politics. I think all of those uh, folks showed um, a lot of great leadership to continue to move our caucus forward and uh, have laid a good foundation for us to now uh, hopefully do something positive with. Uh, there's, I want to go back to your leadership team just a minute, not sure. to pick on any particular person, but there's sure. always been a term that I've heard and I've never really understood what the duties, but the, the whip. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell, sounds kind of violent, us, doesn't it? Well, yeah. uh, tell, <laughs> it sounds interesting. Yeah. Sure. Tell yeah. us what the whip does. The whip is designed to rally support among uh, the members of a particular caucus, uh, really first to gauge where the caucus is. I uh, kind of uh, shorthand it for a communications director. It is the liaison between the leadership and the membership because the, mem the leadership must know where the membership's going on particular issues. By the same token, the membership wants to be informed on what direction the leadership is headed. And so uh, it is an incredibly important position. Rob Johnson, uh, formerly of Congressman Cole's staff, he was the legislative director back in Washington, very well versed in uh, politics, and he's going to do a great job leading the team of whips that we have in a caucus. Uh, to help us manage the affairs. So the whip's got to have the confidence of the leadership team, of course, to get the position in the first place, but he's got to have the confidence of the members to get the information that's necessary. That's exactly right. That is his or her constituency. Uh, and we'll, we have a team of deputy and assistant whips, and uh, those members are their for, first priority. Mm -hmm. now, let me ask you another, I'm sorry. Sure. Let me ask you another question about the uh, numbers of Republicans in mm -hmm. the House. Uh, this last election, your numbers increased, did they not? Well, uh, in, a, in, a, in a way. Um, on election night, it appeared that we were going to be at 56 Republicans, but there was a toss-up race in Ada, Pontotoc County, uh, which initially was reported as being a loss for us uh, by two votes. Uh, we went through the recount process there and were successful in finding that, in fact, there were four votes improperly cast for the Democrat candidate um, it, nothing nefarious, it was just sim a simple mistake by election yeah. officials. Uh, and at the end of the day, that, that seat flipped. So now we are returned with a full 57 seat contingent, uh, which we were first elected to in the 2004 mm -hmm. elections. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the the Senate seems to be uh, where a lot of attention is this this uh, uh, legislative session because of the 24-24 Republican right. Democratic split. How does that affect your job? Well, it certainly is is an unknown. I mean, we've never dealt with this situation. Frankly, you know, Republican leadership of any legislative body is is very uh, almost unique in the state. Uh, we've had a hundred years of virtual monopoly Democrat control of state government. Uh, you've only had three Republican governors. Uh, you've had only two uh, legislative sessions in the history of the state where Republicans controlled the House. Republicans have never controlled the state Senate. So all of this is new in that mm -hmm. respect. Uh, but the split control of the Senate, I think, presents a lot of good opportunities and potential because uh, there are going to be two choices for the, for the leadership of the Senate to make. Either they can bog down and let themselves be, uh, you know, completely ineffective because they have this 24-24 tie, or they'll come together and uh, pass productive legislation in a collaborative fashion. And I know both the leaders over there uh, on the Democrat side, you have Mike Morgan. On the Republican side, you have Glenn Coffey. I think they're both folks who have uh, the best interests of the state at heart and are going to work together in that collaborative way to move good policy forward. And I think uh, certainly for us over on the House side, uh, we had several measures that met less than favorable response over the last two years. And I think uh, we'll have a different environment and perhaps a more productive environment in the, in the coming two years. Well, in the, just 30 seconds or so we have in this segment, uh, whom on the Democratic side in the House will you be dealing with the most? Well, the leader uh, for the Democrat Party in the House is uh, uh, my neighbor, actually, from Lincoln County. It's very unique that right there in the same east side of Oklahoma City we would, uh, we would be together. But that's Danny Morgan. We were elected together in the class of 2000. He's a very fine, decent man, and we'll, we'll work well together. All Great. right. Lance Cargill's our guest. We'll have more from the Speaker of the House when we return on The Verdict. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a blood nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up. Want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> it sure is a blessing. <laughs> we'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey, Meyer, Eatman, Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Just keep it. Thank you. Dr. Kessler? What's up with the pizzas? Well, I just got my first satellite bill and those extra fees were a bit of a shocker. So I had to take a second job. Hey! This was supposed to be pepperoni, Dillweed. Hey, it's Dr. Dillweed to you. Whatever. Kids. <laughs> it's cool, eh? You know, I'm a people person. Don't live in satellite denial. Get all your entertainment without the hidden charges from Cox, your friend in the digital age. One in four women will be a victim of domestic or sexual violence in their lifetime. That's too many. That's why we want you to know that if you or someone you know is suffering at the hands of an abuser, there is help. Call the Oklahoma Safe Line at 1-800-522-SAFE for access to state and local resources that can truly make a difference. Call anonymously, call toll free, call today because domestic violence is not a game. It's, it's life, life or, or death. death.
Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're visiting with the Speaker of the House, Lance Cargill. Lance, uh, I guess tort reform has been an issue session after session after session. Would you expect it to be an issue again this year? Well, it certainly will be. Um, going back to some of the early comments about uh, some of the more collaborative processes I hope that we'll find in the Senate, uh, the House has repeatedly passed uh, a number of lawsuit reform measures uh, to only find um, a, a quick and certain death in the, uh, in the uh, state Senate. Uh, lawsuit reform is important, of course, because we have to have an economic system in this state that is attractive to capital, that allows entrepreneurs to build businesses and not be subject to bankruptcy uh, as a result of uh, a jackpot justice or shakedown settlement type lawsuit process. Now, to be sure, on the other side of that, I think everyone would agree that we need a civil justice system that is open and available to people who legitimately have uh, problems, who have uh, been injured, for example, businessmen and women who perhaps have contractual disputes, et cetera. Um, so there has to be a balance between that. I think uh, so much of the debate has focused on uh, particular policy proposals that I think we forget that there are structural forms, reforms of the civil justice system that we could perhaps entertain that could help move the ball forward as well. Well, I know you've been on this show before and discussing something that did become law, the business court system. Can you remind our viewers about that? Precisely, Kent, and that's the type of structural reform that I think could also help create a fair, more efficient civil justice system. The business court is designed to be an exclusive forum for complex, um, more high-end business disputes, uh, commercial litigation, contractual disputes, intellectual property disputes, et cetera. Many um, states and other cities have formed these specialized courts with an expert judge, uh, expert staff, who are able to understand these complex cases uh, very well, and it and allows for a fair and more efficient resolution uh, within the judicial process. Now, where is our business court legislation? It's been passed. Right. We have enabling language uh, for our two major counties, to uh, Oklahoma and Tulsa County, uh, to run pilot programs, but I think there is much more that can be done there. Uh, frankly, those uh, programs have not been funded in the past, and we haven't perhaps seen the commitment to them that I think we need to to really get the full benefits. There's been a lot of talk in recent legislative sessions about lowering the state income tax. Some headway has been made in that direction. Where are we on that, and are we going to move it again in the 2007 session? Absolutely. We are very committed in the House to seeing the reforms, uh, the uh, state income tax reductions that were uh, passed as a, uh, there was a package uh, tax package last year that was passed that over the course of three years uh, will eliminate the inheritance or so-called death tax. Uh, it will also significantly cut our state income tax. Now, those uh, cuts have to be passed uh, and reauthorized essentially each year, uh, but on the House side we are fully committed to that. I think the income tax in this state, it's too high. Uh, if you look on a national basis, it's one of the highest marginal tax rates in the country. Mm -hmm. The income tax fundamentally punishes work and savings and investment. Mm -hmm. uh, if you work more, we tax you more. If you, if you save or invest more, we, we tax you more. Uh, that is a negative tax for economic growth mm -hmm. and we need to reduce it. Would you like to keep reducing it and at some point uh, have tax reform? Because widespread tax reform gets, gets discussed a lot. Well, there's no question. I think anything we can do to reduce or eventually eliminate um, the income tax would be very good. I don't know in the current political climate um, that we would have the ability to, to develop that consensus, but I think certainly long term it should be a goal. Moving more towards a consumption tax. Uh, you know, if the big rich guy in town wants to buy a big yacht, he'll get hit with a big sales tax. If he wants to save his money, work hard, uh, we're not going to punish that economic activity. Mm -hmm. The uh, education lottery was passed uh, by the people uh, with the uh, idea that uh, the lottery uh, revenue would be generated at certain levels and aid education. Sure. What's your take on what the uh, lottery revenue performance has been so far? Are we getting as much as we thought we would? Well, it's a classic case of so much in politics, overpromised and underdelivered. I mean, I think the original um, estimates or, or um, uh, comments that were made about the potential of the state lottery suggested $300 million in state revenue. Of course, we're finding revenues more in the 50 to $100 million range. Uh, now, certainly that's, n that's nothing to, to just wink at, uh, but there, there was a commitment in the, in the legislature, particularly with a new majority in the House, uh, to adequately and properly fund um, education in the state. In fact, 
You saw over the last two years the highest education budgets in the history of our state. You saw teacher pay raises that on a percentage basis were the highest in the entire country, passed by the first Republican majority in the House in 80 years, and we're very, we're very proud of that. Um, I still have deep concerns over um, the lottery and the expansion of gambling, particularly what it does to the least and the neediest uh, in our society and the disproportionate impact that it has on those folks. I think, frankly, over time, um, certainly we respect the people's decision. They, they chose to, uh, to, to pass these measures, uh, but I view them more in terms of an experiment than a long-term mm -hmm. solution for the state. Let me follow up on that, if I may. Uh, last week's show, we uh, had Dr. Smith on talking about the uh, problem and compulsive gambling and sure. what, how that's uh, expanding in Oklahoma with right. the expansion of casino and lottery gambling. And he expressed a, a concern that there was inadequate funding uh, for uh, training of counselors Absolutely. and for meeting the needs of uh, and the problems of compulsive gambling. Do you share that concern? Deeply concerning. The folks that gave us this enormous expansion of gambling um, back before the 2004 session uh, allowed the horse to get out of the barn with no preparation for the types of social support and safety networks that we really need to address the, the repercussions and the negative social costs um, to gambling. In fact, I had an interim study just last year where we brought in national experts that talked about the complete lack of, of certified counselors in this area. We're very committed to, to um, recognizing that social cost and hopefully helping with it in the upcoming session. We discussed last segment about uh, your relationship with the leaders in the state senate. I'd like to discuss your relationship with the governor. In, the, in, in Todd Hyatt's recent campaign for lieutenant governor, he even mentioned how well he said he had worked with the sure. governor um, to try and garner support for his lieutenant governor uh, campaign. Sure. What is your relationship with Brad Henry, and how does the speaker's role and the governor's role play out in this potential of a deadlock Senate? Sure. Well, uh, Brad Henry was my state senator, actually, when I moved back to Oklahoma after going to college and, and working out of state for a while. So. Um, uh, we're neighbors in that sense. Uh, I've worked very well with the governor on a, a whole host of issues. Actually, um, the, uh, the major education reforms that we were able to pass a couple of years ago, the so-called ACE initiative, I was the House author on that legislation. Uh, and the EDGE initiative, uh, for example, the research endowment initiative that we had in the House last year, I was also the House author on that. Um, so I think we can agree on a lot of things and I'm looking forward to a positive working relationship. We in the House certainly invite the governor to join us in advancing uh, a pro-growth, pro-reform agenda that is, uh, that's aggressive and is ambitious mm -hmm. uh, in its scope for the state in the second century. He is sometimes criticized for not wanting to do tort reform in the manner in which the state House representatives, the Republicans in the mm -hmm. House want to. What's your view on that? Well, it's he, Because he turns around and he, he claims to have have done tort, tort reform. So what's your view on his claims and the actual method in which it, it transpired? Well, uh, perhaps a start, but much more to do on the issue. Um, I think the governor came to the House a year or two ago and said that he supported Texas Plus style tort reform, whatever that means. Uh, well, we certainly haven't reached, you know, Texas Minus yet. Uh, so, uh, I, I, you know, it's my assumption that the governor is supportive of those initiatives. Uh, as you suggest, there's a new opportunity there. Uh, to work in collaboration with the governor and the new Senate leadership to uh, make progress on that issue as well as many others. Mm -hmm. well, we have run out of time. Uh, Speaker, we're going to have to have you back on a future show. Thank I hope you. you'll come back. Yeah, thanks Certainly very much well. and good luck to you. Appreciate Speaker it. Speaker of the House, Lance Cargill, visiting us here on The Verdict. Kent and I'll be back with a final word after this. Good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very 
good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. Looks like somebody doesn't want you to know the facts about Cox Digital Telephone. Maybe it's because over one and a half million customers are saving big, and you can too. Plus, you'll save even more on all your Cox services when you bundle today. Oh, here's that new phone service I've been hearing about. So, while the phone company may not like competition, nice dog. you're gonna love nice it. Doggy. Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us. Welcome back to The Verdict. Glad you're here with us. Hope you enjoyed today's show with the uh, Speaker of the House, Lance Cargill. Fellow with a great past and a bright future. Uh, very young to uh, have the leadership position he has. He's uh, earned it through exemplar, exemplary performance, and I think we'll see more of that from him. Be very interesting. We have a Democratic governor, we have a Republican Speaker of the House, and we have a Senate that's trying to decide they what They can't it is. decide, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ambidextrous. Uh, this is a, truly a two-party state in, in 2007. <laughs> a lot of eyes will be on the state legislature, and we'll be watching uh, Representative Cargill and see how he does. And I uh, and, uh, want to remind you to uh, go to our website, theverdict.tv. You can go to the site and give us an idea of a show that you'd like to see and a guest you'd like to meet. We'll be back next week with another show. See you then. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.